We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter. Our story begins in 1939, immersing us in the vibrant life of the Kirch family, a Jewish family residing in Radom, Poland. We are introduced to Sol and Nachuma, the family's pillars of strength and love, their unwavering devotion to each other, and their five children serving as the foundation of their world. Their eldest, Genek, is a charismatic lawyer with a Hollywood charm and a penchant for charming the ladies, while Addy, the musically gifted engineer, dreams of a life composing jazz beyond the confines of Radom. Jacob, the quiet observer, captures life's moments through his camera lens, and Helena, the youngest daughter, possesses a fiery spirit and unwavering determination that will prove crucial in the years to come. Completing the family is Mila, the talented pianist, alongside her husband, Salim, a doctor whose career is stifled by anti-Semitism, and their infant daughter, Felicia, a beacon of hope and joy amidst the growing darkness that threatens to engulf their world. As the shadows of war lengthen across Europe, the Kirch family gathers for Passover, a bittersweet celebration marked by Addy's absence. He's in France, pursuing his studies and dreams of a life composing music, his return home prevented by his mother's concerns about the escalating tensions and travel restrictions. This Passover, filled with laughter, music, and family traditions, becomes a poignant memory, a bittersweet reminder of the life they once knew and the uncertainty that lies ahead. The Nazi invasion of Poland shatters their peaceful existence, tearing apart the fabric of their lives and scattering the family across the war-torn continent. Jacob and Bella, newly married, flee to Lvov, seeking refuge with Bella's sister, Anna, and her husband, Daniel, hoping to find safety in numbers and a chance to rebuild their lives away from the encroaching threat of Nazi occupation. However, their hope is short-lived as the horrors of war engulf Lvov. During a pogrom, Anna and Daniel are tragically taken by the Nazis, leaving Bella shattered and Jacob grappling with the devastating loss of his sister-in-law and the uncertainty of their own future. Their dreams of a life together are overshadowed by the ever-present threat of violence and persecution. Genek and his pregnant wife, Herta, face a grim fate as they are deported by the Soviets to a Siberian work camp. They endure unimaginable hardships, freezing temperatures, starvation, forced labor, and experience the birth of their son, Josef, in the dead of winter, a testament to their resilience and the unwavering love that binds them together. Their days are filled with backbreaking work, felling trees and hauling logs in the unforgiving Siberian wilderness. Their nights are haunted by the fear of the unknown and the ever-present threat of disease and death, as they witness fellow prisoners succumb to the harsh conditions and the brutality of their captors. Mila and Felicia remain in Radom, where they are forced into the overcrowded ghetto, a place of disease, despair, and constant fear. Mila faces the daily struggle of protecting her young daughter, hiding her in a sack of fabric scraps during SS raids, and eventually making the heart-wrenching decision to send Felicia to live with a Catholic family outside the ghetto walls. The separation is agonizing, but Mila knows it is the only way to ensure her daughter's safety from the ever-present threat of deportation and death. Helena, fueled by her unwavering determination and love for her family, becomes their lifeline, risking her own safety as she travels between Livov, Radom, and Warsaw, using her Aryan appearance and forged papers to navigate the treacherous landscape of war. She secures a hiding place for her parents with a Polish family, the Gorskis, outside of Warsaw, providing them with a temporary haven from the horrors of the ghetto and the constant threat of deportation. She also helps Mila and Felicia escape the ghetto demonstrating her courage and resourcefulness in the face of danger. However, she is devastated by the loss of Bella's family and her inability to save her parents from the Glenich ghetto liquidation, a heart-wrenching reminder of the war's cruelty and the ever-present threat of annihilation. As the war intensifies, each family member faces their own harrowing journey of survival, their paths diverging as they navigate the treacherous landscape of occupied Europe and beyond. Addy, trapped in France and desperate to return home to his family, exhausts every option, seeking any possible route back to Poland. He faces closed borders, travel restrictions, and the constant threat of being discovered as a Jew. 
He eventually secures passage on a ship bound for South America, hoping to find refuge in Brazil and a chance to rebuild his life far from the clutches of Nazi persecution. Despite the distance and the years of silence, he never gives up hope of finding his family, clinging to their memory and writing countless letters, hoping against hope for a response, a sign that they are alive and that one day they might be reunited. Jacob and Bella, after enduring the horrors of the live-off pogroms and the loss of Anna, find their way to a displaced persons camp in Stuttgart, Germany, with their newborn son, Victor. The camp offers a temporary haven, a place to heal from the physical and emotional wounds of the war and to rebuild their lives amidst the ruins of their former world. They hold on to the dream of a new life in America, seeking sponsorship from Bella's uncle and navigating the complexities of emigration paperwork. They face countless obstacles and setbacks, but their love for each other and their son fuels their determination to create a better future for their family. Genek and Herta, after a year of suffering in Siberia, are granted amnesty by the Soviets and join Anders's army. They fight alongside the Allies on the Italian front. Their courage and determination, fueled by the hope of returning to their families and a life of freedom. Genek's charm and wit are tested as he navigates the harsh realities of war, facing the constant threat of death and witnessing the horrors of battle. Herta's strength and resilience are pushed to their limits as she cares for their young son, Joseph, amidst the chaos and uncertainty, always fearing for their safety and longing for the day they can return home. Mila and Felicia, after escaping the ghetto, face further challenges as Felicia is placed in a convent for safety, only to be caught in the bombing of Warsaw. Mila's resilience is tested as she desperately searches for her daughter amidst the ruins of the city, eventually reuniting with her at a devastated convent and facing the agonizing realization that Felicia is gravely ill with scurvy. Mila's is determined to find medical help and a safe haven for them both. She navigates the dangers of war-torn Warsaw, seeking refuge with her sister Helena and Adam, and eventually finding a doctor who can help Felicia recover. Helena, after enduring imprisonment and torture at the hands of the Gestapo in Krakow, returns to Warsaw to find her siblings alive, but with the devastating news of Franka's family's disappearance. The city lies in ruins, and the family faces the challenge of rebuilding their lives amidst the rubble and the ghosts of their past. Helena's spirit remains unbroken, and she continues to fight for her family's survival, using her resourcefulness and quick thinking to secure food, shelter, and a sense of hope for the future. Despite the unimaginable hardships and losses, the Kirks never lose sight of hope and their unwavering love for one another. Addy, through his relentless efforts and the support of his American wife, Caroline, finally receives news of his family's survival through the Red Cross, a moment of profound joy and relief after years of uncertainty and despair. The telegram from Genek brings tears of joy and a renewed sense of purpose as Addy sets about bringing his family to Rio and creating a new life for them in Brazil. Jacob and Bella's dream of a new life in America becomes a reality as they receive sponsorship from Bella's uncle and set sail across the Atlantic, leaving behind the ruins of Europe and embracing the hope of a brighter future. They arrive in America with their young son, Victor, ready to start anew and build a life free from the horrors of the war. Jenek and Selim, Reunited in Italy after years of separation and uncertainty, long to be with their families and build a new life together. Their bond, strengthened by their shared experiences and the knowledge that they are not alone, gives them the strength to face the challenges that lie ahead. And Helena, fueled by love and determination, continues to fight for their survival. She seeks a safe haven for them and a chance to heal from the wounds of the war never giving up on the hope of a brighter future. As the war ends, the family begins to reunite, piece by piece, their stories of survival weaving together a tapestry of resilience and hope. Addy, settled in Rio de Janeiro with his American wife, Caroline, eagerly prepares for his family's arrival, securing apartments and gathering furniture and supplies to create a new home for them in Brazil. He is overwhelmed with joy and gratitude as he welcomes his parents, Helena, Adam, and other relatives to Rio, finally able to embrace them after years of separation and uncertainty. 
The reunion is filled with tears of joy, laughter, and the retelling of their individual stories of survival. Jacob and Bella, with their young son, Victor, arrive in America, stepping onto the shores of a new land, filled with opportunity and the promise of a brighter future. They settle in Chicago, where Jacob builds a successful career as a photographer, capturing life's precious moments and creating a new legacy for his family. They remain connected to their family in Brazil, sharing letters, photographs, and the occasional phone call, their bond transcending distance and borders. Jenek, Herta, and their son, Joseph, join the family in Rio, their reunion filled with tears of joy and relief. They embrace their new life in Brazil, Nye, grateful for the opportunity to heal from the wounds of the war and build a future for their family, free from the fear and persecution they endured in Europe. They find solace in the warmth and beauty of their new home, and Genek's charm and wit once again bring laughter and joy to the family gatherings. And eventually, Franca, Salek, and their mother, Terza, arrive as well, bringing with them the memory of their father, Moshe, who perished in Majdanek. Their arrival completes the family circle. They find comfort in the love and support of their family, and their presence brings a sense of closure and healing to the wounds of the past. The Kirks, though forever marked by the horrors of the war and the loss of loved ones, embrace their new beginnings with gratitude and determination. They celebrate their reunion with a joyous Passover Seder, their voices united in song and prayer. The Seder is filled with laughter, tears, and the retelling of their individual stories of survival, a poignant reminder of their journey and the strength they found in each other. Jacob and Bella build a life in Chicago creating a new home for themselves and their growing family. Victor, born amidst the chaos of war, grows up in America, embraced by his extended family and the opportunities of his new homeland. He learns about his family's history, their struggles and triumphs, and carries with him the legacy of their resilience and unwavering hope. The rest of the family remains in Brazil, their lives intertwined with marriages, births, and new generations. Helena and Adam welcome a son, Ricardo, and later a daughter, Anna, their lives filled with love and the joy of parenthood. Mila and Salim rebuild their relationship, navigating the challenges of reconnecting after years of separation and creating a loving home for Felicia. Genek and Herta welcome another son, Michelle, named after Herta's father, who perished in the Holocaust, and their family flourishes in their adopted homeland. Addy and Caroline build a life together in Rio, their home filled with music, laughter, and the joy of raising their daughter, Kathleen. The Kirks, though scattered across continents, remain united by their love, their resilience, and the legacy of their survival. They keep in touch through letters, phone calls, and visits, cherishing their bond and the memories of their shared experiences. They carry with them the stories of their ancestors, the lessons learned from the war, and the unwavering hope that future generations will never have to endure the horrors they faced. As the years pass, their family grows, with grandchildren and great-grandchildren spreading across the globe, each carrying within them a piece of the Kirk legacy, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit to overcome adversity and find hope, even in the darkest of times. Their story serves as a reminder of the importance of family, the strength of the human spirit, and the enduring power of hope, even in the face of unimaginable odds. If you enjoyed this book summary, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you.